Hi, I'm Sven from the Be Music Project. In the first videos of this tutorial series, we created a simple GDK-based graphical user interface for our MyAmp plugin. But we also learned that GDK is problematic if you want to use it in plugins. Therefore, we have to look for other toolkits, which directly run under X11. One of these toolkits is XPuddy. It's a lightweight toolkit written in C by Hermann Meyer, the one behind Guitarix plugins and the XUI designer. The toolkit just contains the most important widgets and the most important events for music production UIs. So, ideal for non-complex user interfaces. The basic principle of XPuddy. A main XPuddy object takes control about widgets and events. Inside the main XPuddy object, there is one top-level widget, a window. And inside the top-level widget, you can put the widgets you need. All widgets are inseparably added to its parent widget. And there is only one single widget class. Different appearance is a result of defining and calling different expose event callback functions, which are called when the widget becomes visible or its status is changed. And then you can add additional features, like an adjustment for values and ranges. Let's start coding. Coding an LB2 plugin for X11 is a little bit more complex than for GDK. We have to take three additional things in account, which were all built in for GDK. First of all, when we create a user interface, we need a host provided container to put it in, the parent window. Then we have to tell the host which method shall be called to keep the user interface on running. This is via the EDL interface. And finally, we are responsible for cleaning up the user interface and the allocated memory. This is done in a user defined destructor. In a theory, duplicate our MyAmp GDK project. Rename it to myamp underscore xparty. Also rename the UI files to underscore xparty. The turtle files. In the manifest, we rename the URI to underscore xparty for both the plugin and the UI. And also rename the UI binary. It's not a GDK3 plugin anymore. But what is it now? Take a look into the LB2 specs. It's an X11 UI. The same changes in the myamp xparty turtle file. Also change the URI of the linked UI in the plugin definition part. And also change the plugin name. Back to the UI definition. As mentioned before, we require the EDL interface as a feature. By lv2 colon required feature UI colon EDL interface. And it should be provided via the extension data. By lv2 colon extension data UI colon EDL interface. In the plugin myamp.c file, we only have to adapt the URI. Now we need the library. Go to Hermann's XParty repository. Here we can either download and unzip libxparty as a subfolder in our current directory, or if you are familiar with Git, you can clone it as a submodule. Then we build a static library by running make from the libxparty subfolder. This creates an additional libxparty subfolder. Here you can find the static library archive files and the includes. Keep the path in mind, we will need it later. But anyway, I will store the include path in my editor settings. Now my editor and the linter knows where to find the includes. The header file. We will firstly change the GDKs to XParties and the symbols. We include XParty and XWidget. The GDK widget pointers become widget T pointers. And we now also have got a dial. We need a destructor as mentioned before. And value change callback will be called with other parameters. Keep it empty first. In the CPP file. First adapt the includes. Then starting from the bottom. The export function will be the same. We have to adapt the URI symbol as we defined before. Next to Incentiate. Again we check for the right plugin, the XParty plugin. And then we call the UI constructor. But before we need to know where to put our UI. This is new compared to GDK. And this information will be provided as a feature. The feature list is provided by the door. It is a list of feature URIs mapped to their respective data. And if a door provides a parent window for the plugin, 
Then it tells it via its apparent window feature URI and links the data via a void pointer. So we scan the features by resetting the void point apparent X window to null pointer, then iterate through the features, and if string compare the feature URI and the LV2 underscore UI double underscore parent returns zero, thus are the same, then set parent X window to the feature data. And at the end of the feature scanning we have to check if we succeeded or not. If not parent X window, then write an error message to the error console, like required feature LV2 UI parent not provided, and return null pointer for fail. We should also tell parent X window to the constructor, as there the constructed UI should be put into the parent window. Add this to the constructor call, and in the header file, and in the constructor definition. As we are already here, we can now adapt the constructor. As in GTK, we want to place a widget, now a dial instead of a slider, into a box. But first in the HPP file, we need XParty main for our main object. And initialize it in the CPP file first by main init reference main. Then we build the top level widget box by create window, reference to main, our parent window, the origin, and the extents. Parent X window needs to be cast to window. The parent struct of the box will be this. We set the box label. This will be shown in the window title. Now let's add a dial to the box by add not box no label the position and the extent somewhere in the middle of the box. Red lines as I didn't include X widgets for all widgets yet. Only the top level classes X party and widget in the HPP file. Then again parent struct is this. Then we can link it to a port index which is 2, as we remember from the plugin definition. By data is 2. And we can link a callback function if the dial value has been changed by dragging. By dial arrow func for callback functions dot value changed callback is value changed callback. Red lines as our value changed callback has got incompatible types. We will fix this later. And as the dial is a widget with values and a value range, we have to define these parameters. This is done with that adjustment, the dial adjustment, the standard value, the value, the min value, the max value, the step size and the adjustment type CL continuous. As the dial is now fully defined and it is created as a child of the box, we can make all visible by widget show all box. Next the destructor. This is new as we are now responsible for cleaning up all widgets and freeing the memory. In GDK this was automatically done by the host provided GDK window. Now we need main quit reference main. Get main. This method returns the top level widget. In our case it is box. Or to be more precise, box arrow widget. I have now some problems with the method name. We already have got a class member called main, which is an X party object. And our get main method returns the top level widget instead of the main X party object. So we better rename this method to get top level widget here, and in the header file, and in the method call in instantiate. For event. This is more or less the same. We only have to replace the GTK range set value. Values are set in XPuddy by setting the widget adjustment value by adjustment set value, dial adjustment, and value. Value changed callback. Callbacks in XPuddy are called with two parameters a void pointer to an object, this can be a widget, and a void pointer to data, and it returns void. So in the HPP file, we firstly add the two parameters to the method declaration, and in the CPP file to the method header. Inside, we cast the object to a widget T pointer. Then we get the value from the widget using adjustment get value and the widget adjustment. Our MyAMP UI is still unknown and it's not data. How can we get it? Keep in mind that we are within a static method. Yes, we set it before in widget parent struct. So we can get it from there by myMPUI pointer UI the static cast myMPUI pointer widget arrow parent struct. 
crawling down, cleanup and port event can stay as they are. But now we need the extension data. How do extension data work? In the TTL file we defined that we will provide an EDL interface via the extension data. By calling the extension data with the EDL interface URI, the host asks for a pointer to the EDL interface. And then the host can call our EDL interface function repeatedly to keep the plugin running, where it will call the run embedded function from XPuddy. So we firstly need an EDL interface function, which only takes our plugin handle, UI, and it will be static. Then we cast UI to my MPUI pointer, as we did it before. Now we can call run embedded with a reference to the plugin UI main XPuddy object. But this one is private. We could make it public, or we export a pointer to it by writing a getXPuddy method. This is done. Now we only need to return 0 for success. Inside the extension data, we define a static LV2 UI EDL interface as a struct, only containing a pointer to the EDL interface function we just defined. Static as it then stays viable outside the function. Then we check if string compare of the parameter URI and the LV2 underscore UI underscore underscore EDL interface are the same, and thus return 0. Then return a reference to our static EDL struct. Otherwise, return null. Now we are ready to compile, to test and to improve our plugin in the next video.